Hello, good evening, good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to our uh, Carols by Candlelight. We weren't going to live stream this, but um, I was asked to live stream it this evening. So, uh, those who are at home may only see shadows. <laughs> but as you can hear, which is the important thing, um, when you come up, we, we, of course, the service. Uh, is we, we, we remain seated during the, uh, during, until the very end and we sing the carols one after the other after each reading. Uh, the, the persons who are reading, you come up and you just read and, um, and then you go back to your seat and you carry on singing the carols. There's no interruption during the service. Uh, in any announcement and so on until the very end. Just to say, this light here, there's a little button underneath here, you, you click it like that and it comes on. If you click it again, it gives you that. <laughs> you click it again, it gives you that. Right. If you leave, we don't want to leave it on because it's one of those chargeable, and we don't want to lose charge during the night. <laughs> okay, so, so we. Um, if you don't know how to do that, do it for the rest of the time. So um, we'll just turn it on and turn it back off so that uh, it keeps the charge throughout. Uh, if you have an offering, uh, do put it in the offering plate at the back and we will collect that um, during the last, just before the last carol, um, judge the world and pray for that blessing on it. Right, so let's, let's pray as we begin our service of carols and lessons this evening. Our Father, we are grateful for Jesus. He came into our world to bring us joy, to bring us salvation. So tonight, Lord, as we come to sing carols, to sing of his goodness, of his gift to us, we pray, Lord, that you'll be with us tonight. We ask that you will help us to sing clearly and joyfully as unto the Lord and not for men. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to sing our first carol. O come, all you faithful, joyful and triumphant.
The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You've enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the food. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burns them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fueled for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is born. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, <clears throat> Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The elements of the first
but in Bethlehem, a fratter. Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And then we live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name 
said with Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his name, Father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me. Be fulfilled. Let me thank you.
how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her in public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name of Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave her the name Jesus.
Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his arm. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the search around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearning, yearning together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his arms into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. <coughs> For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
your kingdom come, let your will be done. Jesus, humble King, we remember that your family had nowhere to stay when you were born. Please be with the homeless, the refugees, and those who are struggling to make ends meet this Christmas. Humble King, we long for your kingdom here, on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Jesus, King of Kings, we remember that powerful leaders visited you when you were born. Give your wisdom, boldness, and grace to our world leaders, to politicians, business people, and those with influence. King of Kings, establish your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, and let your will be done. Jesus, King of Peace, we remember Herod's jealousy, lies and violence when you were born. Bring your peace in places of conflict, anger and hatred across the world and right here in our communities. King of Peace, we pray for your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Jesus, King of Righteousness, we remember Herod's rash promise which led to the death of John the Baptist. Bring your righteousness into our thought processes and those of all leaders and those upholding the law so that justice will prevail across the world and start here in all communities. King of righteousness, we pray for your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Amen.
nearby, keeping watch over their flock that night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom he saved the rest.
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was Joy. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children, not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
Let us pray. Silent night. Holy night. Lord Jesus, on that night when you were born, the world carried on. And yet, your coming into the world changed a world. And so we ask that you come again, not just into our world, but into our lives, and change us. We pray this in your name. Christmas time, we give gifts to each other. We do this to say thank you. We say we appreciate you. But sometimes we just give gifts to say it's Christmas. <laughs> Here's a gift. Sometimes we give gifts at birthdays. We give gifts that people don't want, and we may also receive gifts that we don't want. But we are told that it is not so much the gift as the thought that counts. The fact that you thought of me to give me something, anything, is a symbol of goodwill and concern and even care. And so we say we appreciate the thought, even if we don't like the gift. We've heard many readings tonight. We've heard the story of Christmas in the readings, in the Songs in the carols. If there's one thing the carols do well is to teach us the theology of Christmas. In fact, just listening to the carols alone is itself powerful. But the carols with the readings together give us the message. And so, what is left for me to do is to kind of give you a summary of that message. But as I was thinking about this, I realized one reading that is not in the readings, the Christmas readings, is a reading I think should be. It's one verse. It's one verse. And I want us to sort of draw our attention to that verse. It's a very famous verse, most of you probably know it. It's John 3 and verse 16. It says, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We don't read that at Christmas, but it is, in fact, a Christmas reading. And I think it's a Christmas reading for two reasons. The first is that it tells us that God is a giver of gifts. After all, what could be more Christmas than to give gifts? We give gifts not only because, as the children will tell me, the wise man gave baby Jesus gifts. And so we give gifts. Oh, yes, of course. But we give gifts more importantly because God gave us the gift of His only begotten Son. The greatest gift is the gift of God's Son. Christmas is, in fact, a celebration of the greatest gift 
to humanity, and that gift was given to us by God. We give gifts because God first gave us a most precious and invaluable gift, the gift of His Son. And so we give gifts in imitation of our Father. Christmas is a celebration of the giving of the gift of God's Son to the world. Now I've start, I started this talk by saying there are gifts that we may receive that we don't like. And it's the thought that counts. God has given us a gift. So that gift is his son. How are we doing with that gift? <laughs> is it another gift that we just stick in the cupboard and never look at? Is it another gift? That we don't really want, but we received. We'll come back to that in a moment. The second reason I think this is a Christmas reading is that this verse tells us why God gives us this all important gift. The answer is because He loves us. Now, I, I don't know why you give someone a gift. Maybe, maybe it's a secret Santa, and um, you will pick the name out of a hat, and you are asked to give this person a gift. Not because you love them, but because you have their name. Okay? Or maybe you, you are asked to give a gift to someone as a sort of token of gratitude. Maybe it's just because it's someone's birthday, well, it's just because it's Christmas. That's what we do. We give gifts. Not because we have any particular affection for the person, but hey, it's Christmas. We give gifts. The love that God has for us is to encourage us to show that same love to one another. The love for God is the chief love, in fact. But let me say, we cannot love God unless we understand that He has first loved us. Because so the love God has for sinners must never be taken for granted. God loves sinners. It's one of the most profound statements of the Bible. There is nothing lovable about us, but God loves us anyway. Uh, and in St. Paul, he says it best. He says that even when we were enemies of God, God demonstrated his love to us in sending Jesus, his most precious gift, to us. So we give gifts to the ones we love, but usually it is also the ones who love us in return. We don't usually give gifts to our enemies. And yet, that is what God has done for us at Christmas. This is why I believe Christianity is a radical faith. We are not called to simply love those who love us. We are not to only love the lovable. We are called to imitate the love of God for sinners. Love the unlovable. Love, in fact, even our enemies. And, and with all the nice songs that we sing and the feel goodness that we have at Christmas, that is the hard truth of Christmas. God loves sinners. And sinners must in turn love other sinners. So Christmas is God demonstrating his love for sinners by giving the most precious gift that he has, the gift of his son. There is a song, I, I, I was, as I was reflecting on this, there's a song that came to mind, 
was a song that you probably know. Um, it was sung by the Jackson Five many moons ago. And it goes something like this. People making lists, buying special gifts, taking time to be kind to one and all. It's that time of year when good friends are near and you wish you could give more than just presents from the store. Why don't you give love on Christmas Day? Or even the man who has everything would be so happy if you would bring him love on Christmas Day. No greater gift is there than love. People you don't know smile and buy hello. Everywhere there's an air of Christmas joy. Is that once a year when the world's sincere and you'd like to find a way to show the things that words can't say? So, why don't you give love at Christmas Day? What the world needs is love. Now, I think, of course, because this song actually captures the spirit of Christmas well, except for one problem. The problem is the world really needs is not love in a vacuum. No. What the world needs is God's demonstration of love in the giving of his son. That's what the world needs. The love that the world needs is a love of God in the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. The world needs Jesus Christ because it is through Jesus Christ that the world will find this love. There is no such thing as love in general. It's love in particular. And that's why Christina Rossetti can say, love came down at Christmas. In fact, it is because of God's love why we can even begin to show love to others. God loves the world. God loves this sinful, rebellious world so much that he gave the most precious gift imaginable, the gift of his son. So that if anyone, anyone should receive this precious gift, they would have a turn. You know, John, in one of the readings of, well, in fact, the very last one we had, tells us that Jesus came to his own people, but they did not receive him. But it says, John says, to all those who receive him, he gives the privilege to be called children of God. All those who receive God's precious gift of God's Son become sons and daughters of God themselves. There's no other precious gift that you could have or give at Christmas. It is in fact the gift of eternal life. And so my prayer for you, my prayer in fact for the world, it is my prayer every Christmas that the world will receive the precious gift of God's Son. That gift that's come wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. This is the gift that is the Savior of the world. This is the gift that will keep on giving. This is the gift that the world needs more than any other. This gift has come wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. When he came, many in our world simply were oblivious to his coming. Today, many still carry on with the shopping, with the, the madness, as if he hasn't come. And so all that is left for humanity, for our world, is to unwrap the sea precious gift. Receive him into our lives. Like the wise men, like the shepherds, who recognize the value of God's precious gift to humanity, fall on our knees and worship him. Amen. As we
So we're going to sing our final carol, which is joy to the world. After this, after the final carol, I'm going to take the table up. We're going to bring the offering up, and we're going to turn on the lights, and then we'll have our final blessing and notices. So, for our final carol, I'm sure to the Lord. Uh, a 
and also, just to say, we also have our lunch night service next week as well, on the 31st of, uh, of December, so if you can put that in the diary as well. If you can stay behind for a bit of mince pie and some tea, that would be great. Um, we have some, I'm sure, and uh, we'd love to share with you before you go. I think we have some more wine as well, if you're up to go, if you're up to that. <laughs> The rest of the notices are there. Um, uh, let's, um, let's stand and we have our final blessing and pray. And so may the joy of the angels, with the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, the love of God the Father and the peace of the Christ child be with you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all you love today, this Christmas season, and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a safe night, good night, and Merry Christmas.